Coach Rick Corona. Coach Corona has had coaching experience at seven different high schools and also has coached at three different universities, Western Michigan, Northwood, and Wayne State. Even though his high school coaching has spanned 21 years, Coach Corona has coached for 31 years. During his high school coaching days, he has enjoyed six conference championships, Macomb County championships, and an undefeated regular season has been to the state playoffs 12 years winning eight district and seven regional championships. He has enjoyed being a Division II state runner-up at Brother Rice in 2002 and at De La Salle Collegiate in 2008, and also claiming three Division II state championships at De La Salle Collegiate. He has published articles, Attack the Wishbone with Split 7 Defense, Coach and Athlete in 72, and Offensive Blocking, Athletic Journal in 73. He was an East coach in the 2003 East-West All-Star Game and was awarded the MHS FCA Class A Assistant Coach of the Year in 2000. Coach Corona retired from coaching after the 2018 season at De La Salle Collegiate. The biggest thrill in coaching for Coach Corona, it was the 2003 East-West All-Star Game. Our goal was to develop a true sense of team in one week's time of practice. Every player got plenty of playing time and the attitude and motivation was terrific. Our efforts proved successful as the East beat the West 12 to six. Coach Corona's thoughts on why coach and what it has meant to him. Football is a major influence on me as a player. I learned that success is not handed to you, that life can become unfair. So it was natural for me to want to share these life lessons and develop successful life skills in players beyond their playing days. Truthfully, adversity doesn't build character, rather it reveals it. In my mind, I hope to foster football's intrinsic values, tools to overcome adversity, not just the blocking and the tackling skills. Football means the team members must adopt a vital mindset where they must sacrifice their personal gains, commit to each other to be a difference maker to achieve the team's success. Ladies and gentlemen, the newest member of the Hall of Fame, Coach Rick Corona. Thank you, Jack. Uh, you know, <laughs> being recognized with your peers and by your peers is truly an honor. And to be honest with you, I wondered if I'd uh, ever have this moment to share Kind of reminds me a little bit of those final seconds just before opening kickoff. I want to take this opportunity to thank the people who had made this possible for me. Thanking first our past presidents for my induction, recognizing regional directors of Detroit Catholic Central, Roy Dudas, and our own Andy Patterson at DeLaSalle for their support. And I also want to extend my gratitude to a former president of this association, Pete Call, who nominated me quite some time ago. My 31-year career is a little unique, combining both college and high school, as Jack mentioned, over a 50-year period, from 1965 to 2018. You might ask why, and simply said, I had to take time away from coaching more than once to meet critical family responsibilities. And it's a treat to be able to follow now three men who underscore that intrinsic value. And as every coach here tonight knows, balancing the family as number one can be quite a challenge. Here's my short recap. I got quite an education in the first two years as a coach in the Detroit Catholic League where the competition was very, stu <coughs> very stiff. Uh, led by top notch coaches like Elf Fricasa, Tony Ricciacci at Divine Child, a future NFL coach, and Coach Bill McCartney, a future national champion at the University of Colorado. With only two wins in two years, it was clear to me things had to change. I had to go somewhere to learn the right way. And I vowed never to be unprepared again. Two years at Western Michigan as a graduate assistant provided a very strong, solid foundation leading to a full-time position at Northwood. 
where our team, very strong in success, sparked my ambition to continue at the college level, perhaps even Division I. Uh, at age 30, sometimes you have some very ambitious aspirations. But suddenly life stopped me state in my, uh, dead in my tracks, excuse me. A few days after birth of our second son, he died and my wife and I were devastated. Then as we tried to recover from our tragedy, what you know, two division one opportunities came my way. So clearly I faced the choice, outrageously unnerving. But as a committed husband, I really wanted only one path, and that was to take her home to her family in Detroit. And it meant hanging up my whistle, and I anguished, could it be for good? Then 15 years later, a real disaster struck. <coughs> my wife was about to fly to California to see a lifetime friend just before the start of the new year. As I kissed her goodbye at the airport, her final words to me were, you're going back on the field. She hadn't forgotten my sacrifice for her after all that time. But within minutes, those thoughts disappeared when her flight, Northwest Flight 255, crashed at Detroit Metro Airport seconds after takeoff. As a single dad, obviously I faced the greatest challenge a person could face to raise three sons. However, within hours, and I stress that, within hours, the response from my family, friends, neighbors, church, faithful friends was limitless. It was kind of like football in the teamwork at its best. These teammates picked us up and then like coaches, guided my sense of direction. Allow me to recognize these friends who have joined us, who walked that same path. Jim O'Connor from Florida, a college classmate of 60 years. Larry and Cindy Lehman, Pete and Patty Bologna, Bob and Carol Schroeder, also representing my family, our brothers Gary and Paul. I am steadfastly linked to them for life. And now I'd like you to meet those three sons. First, Brian from Philadelphia, a former De La Salle captain, Miami University linebacker, and now a dedicated dad helping to raise three daughters. Matt from Chicago, who uh, you might know, played in our 1995 All-Star game, along with my only grandson, Ethan, and his younger sister, Avery. Finally, Janie from St. Louis. He's coach at two Metro Detroit high schools, Olivet College and Washington University, Washington University in St. Louis. If you fellows would please stand. There is one common thread in their stories namely the values taught by football, with the guidance of solid coaches, plus their own determination and persistence. They faced adversity, and I can probably say, met its challenge. Thank you, boys. Remarkably, I was fortunate enough to have coached with 20 men who are members of this Hall of Fame. Here's a short snapshot of some of these talented men who helped mold me into the coach I tried to be. Bob Wyman, Western Michigan, taught far more than X's and O's. He stressed, you'll be as good as the relationships you develop with your players. John Royce, Gross Point South, reminded me, Rick, it's not college. These are high school kids. And by the way, here's where the real coaching is done. Sterling Heights Stevenson's Rick Vine and Jerry Lajones, two dynamic partners whose approach befuddled opposing coaches, didn't it, Terry? <laughs> it was nothing more than kiss. Keep it short and simple. Bill Doolittle, the Western Michigan head coach, emphasized 
when you believe something is vital, as a coach, there's gonna be times that you have to prove it by doing it yourself. And if you ever watched one of my special teams drills, you understand those little details that I focused on. <laughs> Two head coaches at De La Salle transformed a culture into three state titles within a five year period. I'm grateful for both of them to have let me be a part of it. Paul Verska developed winners with the persistence and the tenacity of a bulldog. He preached, but more importantly, he practiced. Never take no as an answer. Mike Giannone, in my opinion, no coach in the last 35 years, and I have been around De La Salle football for 35 years, was more effective to carry out the school's motto, Builders of Boys, Makers of Men. Alfred Gaza, Brother Rice, truly a godfather. Be genuine, be sincere with your boys. Show you really care about them as individuals, and they'll do anything for you. And lastly, Bob Schroeder, a true friend, the kind you can only count on one hand. He helped me take my whistle off the hook. Guided me to so many opportunities. We've coached together, believe it or not, at four different schools. Gross Point South, Chippewa Valley, Wayne State, and De La Salle. But let's not forget, it still comes down to players making plays. And I've been fortunate, honestly even blessed, to have coached three high school All-Americans, five college All-Americans, and three future NFL pros. One recently texted me, kind of cute, congratulations, sir. Thanks for being such a great coach for us and an even better motivator. You know, I firmly believe that as coaches, we have IOUs. If we expect commitments from our players, then we're obliged to help them strive and reach those dreams. As a father, I learned an indelible lesson from a retired Bo Schembechler. While attending a Miami game, Bo sat down with my son Brian, who had considered giving up football. It didn't take long for Bo to make a difference. And in these final years, I made this very action my priority reaching out to past college colleagues. I tried to help start college careers for our players. Probably the most rewarding example for me personally was just like the movie Blindside. We had a player drifting aimlessly after being orphaned. And he had been written off by school administrators but we worked hard and got him into Olivetta, and the result is a terrific story. Captain of the team, two-year all-conference player, a NCAA Division III playoff, and most importantly, a college degree. Looking back through these years, I think my decision to coach was the right one. My goal to make a difference in a player's life Sometimes it was effective more than I could ever imagine. So let me share with you a recent uh, email that came to uh, me from our 1999 De La Salle quarterback. Congratulations, as this is a well-deserved and perhaps long overdue honor. Please know the immense influence you have had on me as a man, as a coach, and now as an educator. It has had a lifetime, lifetime impact on me, and for that, I'm forever grateful. Finally, I'd like to single out a very, very special person in my life, one with whom I've shared 22 years, my wife, Betsy. Please stand, my Bets. She has valiantly plugged into a scene so foreign, sharing all aspects of coaching, good and bad. And now in turn as a teacher, ironically, she coaches me on what grandparenting is all about. 
In closing, this accolade has been on my bucket list for years, and as a lifetime career assistant coach, it's truly a privilege to have been part of this esteemed class here tonight. To hear Mike and Terry speak so strongly about the balance of life, family, and football. Coaches really appreciate it. Families witness and hopefully grow closer together by it. It's been basically like I've been flying in a jet plane and now at last I'm in the first class seat. Jack, let me commend you. And I have to digress a bit. In my second year at Western Michigan, we had a young kicker who was waiting for an NFL kicker to graduate, and Jack was that kicker. Let me commend you for all your efforts through these 30 years. You make this night so special for so many people, and from this side of the mic, it's truly a Kodak moment. Thank you all, and enjoy the evening.